this video, so feel free to skip to whichever part you are interested in. When it comes to drawing faces, it can be quite tricky to differentiate between a female face and a male face. And a general rule that I follow to make a face more masculine is to use hard lines and pointy edges, which are commonly associated with men, whereas soft curves and round edges are commonly associated with women. So this key difference is something that we should take note of, especially throughout this video, as I demonstrate how I draw a male face. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare, and I am so excited to be sharing and recommending a class I watched this week by Gabrielle Bricky or artwork by Gabrielle on Instagram, and I'm sure that you guys have heard of her. She also teaches on Skillshare, and one of her classes that I'm recommending is called Learn to Draw Daily Practices to Improve Your Drawing Skills. And this video is so in-depth and thorough that I highly urge you guys to check it out if you want to learn how to draw just about anything. So in my video, I will be talking about how we can use basic shapes to draw a face, but Gabrielle's video actually teaches us how we can see an object, any object, and break it down into basic shapes so it's easier to understand and it makes it easier for us to draw. So I will link that tutorial in the description box below for you to watch on Skillshare. And if you didn't know what Skillshare is, it is an online learning community where you can learn a range of creative skills such as drawing. And you can also watch video tutorials taught by professionals. And because they are sponsoring this video, I have a special link also in the description box that gives the first 1,000 people to join using that link two months free of their premium membership, which normally costs less than 10 US dollars a month if you pay annually, but if you join using that link, you don't pay for two months. And a premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of their classes, including the one by Gabrielle. So I definitely urge you guys to check out the links in the description box and check out Skillshare and also check out Gabrielle. And speaking of basic shapes, let's start with two. The first one is a circle, and the size of this circle determines the size of the head that we are drawing. The smaller the circle, the smaller the head. The bigger the circle, the bigger the head. The second basic shape is a trapezium, where the top is wider than the bottom, and this shape represents the lower part of the face, such as the jaw and chin. The height of this trapezium can change to create different male face shapes. For example, a tall trapezium creates an oval and triangular face shape, whereas a short trapezium creates a round or square face shape. And you can also increase the distance of the short trapezium to the circle to create a rectangular face shape. For this demonstration, we are going to use a circle and a tall trapezium combination to create the common oval face shape. So now let's divide the face vertically in half. Then divide the face horizontally into six sections, which should give us a total of seven lines from the top of the face to the bottom. An easy way to do this is to take a ruler and measure the height of the face that you've drawn. Mark the top and bottom of the face and then divide it into half and also place a mark on the halfway point. Then you've got the top section. Divide that into three parts. And then lastly, divide the bottom section also into three parts, making sure that you mark every measurement. After that, draw a horizontal line on every mark that you've made. And this basically creates our guidelines for the face. Each line represents a part of the face. For example, Line one is for the top of the head, line two is for the hairline, line three is for the eyebrows, line four is for the eyes and top of the ears, line five is for the nose and bottom of the ears, line six is for the mouth, and lastly, line seven is for the chin. Now let's start drawing the facial features. When it comes to drawing masculine eyes, I start with a boxy leaf shape, which is the only way that I can describe whatever shape it is that I'm drawing. 
and notice that instead of using curves, I'm actually using a boxy shape with hard lines and pointy edges to make the eyes look a little bit more masculine. And with this shape, you can actually change the height and angle to create different eye shapes. For example, bigger eyes or round eyes or angled eyes or almond shaped eyes. And to draw the other eye, what you can do is simply draw the same shape next to the eye that we've drawn and then draw a third eye next to it. Then erase the middle eye and you've got two eyes. This follows the rule that the distance between each eye is another eye. Now this is a general rule, but you can totally ignore it because you can draw the eyes closer together for close set eyes or further apart for wide set eyes. Then we're going to draw circles for the pupils and then draw two lines above the eyes, which basically mimics the top curve of the eyes. This represents the eyelid. And with this, you can draw it closer to the eyes or further from the eyes to create either deep set eyes or hooded eyes. Or you could choose not to draw it at all for monolid eyes. For eyebrows, let's start by drawing a long and angled trapezium on line three. And make sure that the width of this shape is wider than the width of the eye. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend the end just downwards a little bit, connect it back to create a small arched eyebrow. So a thick and straight eyebrow is commonly perceived to be more masculine, but it is also up to you to reduce the thickness or add a more prominent arch for um, variety and diversity. And of course, draw a mirror of this shape onto the other side. For the nose, I like to start with a circle on the center of line five to represent the tip of the nose. So with this circle, you can change the size. The bigger the circle, the rounder the nose, and the smaller the circle, the pointier the nose. Then I draw two curves for the nostril on each side of the circle. And you can also change the width, the depth, and the angle of this curve to create a diverse range of noses. Then I also draw two small lines to create the wings of the nose, just to complete it. And lastly, for a masculine nose, I like to draw a fairly straight line from the eyebrows to the circle. It touches the edge of the circle, and this creates the bridge of the nose. And by actually drawing that line and adding um, emphasis to it shows that the bridge of the nose is quite prominent and there's some height to it. For the mouth, let's start with the shape that we used for the eye, but have a V cut out on top and also make it wider than the eyes because generally the mouth is wider than the width of the eye. And I also like to draw a horizontal line across the mouth to separate the upper lip and the lower lip, but you don't necessarily have to draw it as a straight line. You can add um, some curves to it for more details. Then with this shape, you can actually change the height to make thicker lips or thinner lips. But for a general masculine face, we can stick to fairly thin lips. And when it comes to refining these shapes or adding line art, I usually just choose to emphasize the horizontal line in the middle as well as the bottom of the mouth. For the ears, I like to start with drawing a letter C starting from line four and ending on line five. And then I draw a curve that looks like what you are seeing on screen because I have absolutely no idea how to explain this. But this curve pretty much just simplifies the details of the ear. It only really shows us the helix, the tragus, and the earlobe. However, you are free to add more details to the ear. But for me, I feel like this is enough to represent an ear, so I leave it as simple as this. For the hairline, let's go back up to line two and draw a square hairline, which is perceived to be more masculine. And to draw this, just think as if you're drawing the upper half of a square. And there are actually multiple hairlines that you can draw to create different face shapes, which you can see on screen, but let's stick to a square hairline. 
Now that we have our facial features, it is time to go and refine our drawing. So we can trace out the trapezium that we had earlier to draw the jaw and the chin. We can also add in the neck, add in some hair and maybe some shading. And while we're doing this, Keep in mind that to create a masculine face, we want to use hard lines and pointy edges. So refrain from softening any curves. For example, with the chin, I used a trapezium instead of a triangle because we wanted to square that chin off so that it's not as round as it commonly is for female faces. And some of the shapes that I also used to explain how to draw different facial features were quite boxy, angled, and rigid. So those things coming together are um, techniques that I use in my own art to create a more masculine aesthetic. And please note that this is not the only way to draw a male face. There are so many different methods and techniques out there. This method works for me. It might not work for you. It might work for other people and that's totally okay. So I highly recommend that you go out there, explore and experiment. Also, I have hinted at a few ways that you can diversify the male face. So I would highly recommend that you challenge yourself with drawing different eyes based on changing just the height or the angle or creating different nose shapes as I've hinted in this video. So as a challenge or an exercise, if you would like to participate, you can actually draw a face based on some prompts that I have created. Um, they will be in the description box. It is like a worksheet. You don't have to do it, but if you're looking for something that hopefully can help you out with your drawing, especially with a male face, then I recommend that you download the worksheet, try it yourself, and if you do, definitely tag me. Let me know. I would love to see it. Another tip, of course, is to use reference images for your practices. And as you use these reference images, observe and maybe use your analytical skills. And this is probably where Gabrielle's tutorial might come in handy. And that is why I highly, highly recommend it. Observing and analyzing and actually implementing that into your practice is actually one of the most useful ways to learn how to draw just about anything. And you can also apply those skills into other avenues. So observe and implement it in your drawing. So that is it for my video. I hope you found this helpful and that you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and feel free to share it to whoever you think might want to see this kind of video. Um, comment down below any tutorials that you want me to make next as well. I will most likely pick out whichever ones are highly requested, put it in a YouTube poll, and you guys can help me decide. And also, don't forget to subscribe for more videos and push that notification button so you know when I randomly upload. And thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next one.